Hey y'all, let's talk. It's been impressed upon me uh, just to talk. Not using the Bible today or anything, I'm just talking about what God has given me and to share what he's given to me throughout my life with y'all. Uh, well, I guess to start out with, uh, I got me a cup of coffee here. Praise God for good coffee. And the little horse there, <laughs> he's gonna hang out with us. But anyway, uh, start out with, I guess, the birth of, of Jesus, Yahshua, our Lord. We know that John the Baptist said, uh, when he baptized uh, Jesus, he begun his ministry he was like the age of 30. That's what John the Baptist said. <clears throat> and so we know that uh, in the book of Daniel, that the prophet Daniel was given from the angel Gabriel the prophecy of when the Messiah would come. And when he comes, he would be cut off in the midst of that seven-year covenant that he was going to confirm with Israel for seven years. In the midst of that, he would be cut off. He said, not for himself. Well, we know that was for us. They're on the cross. That Christ died for us. They're on the cross of Golgotha, Calvary. And... uh so we know that that was in the month of the Passover, which was like in the month of March. And so if we know that John said he was begun his ministry at the age of 30, then it had to be three and a half years later because in the midst of that seven year covenant, he was cut off, not for himself, but for the sins of us, the people. That's what he died for, to take away the sin of the world. Just like John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Glory be to his holy name. So he was the age of 30 when he began. He was cut off at the age of 33 and a half, three and a half years later. And so that would mean he was age 33 and a half. So it's not hard to tell which month he was born in, just like with us. If, if one of us were 33 and a half years old, we count six months ahead and wouldn't know what month we were born in. So that was in the month of March, what we call March. And so you go six months ahead from that time, That'd be April, May, June, July, August, September. That's the month of September that he was uh, born. And so September's coming up, the month of his birth. And uh, I believe something's about to happen. I believe that fire that glory, that blue fire that I've talked to y'all about and the hot coals of burning fire that me and my family saw in the year 1995 on the Gregorian calendar that uh, we were witnesses to each other of seeing it so we can't deny that we saw it. It really happened and the cars that were driving up the road, they drove right through it, so obviously they didn't see it. That tells us that it was spiritual. God opened our, the eyes of our spirit, and we could see in the spirit world. <clears throat> he can do that for anybody at any time that he wishes to. But anyway, 
Uh, there's a difference in the lunar calendar and the Gregorian. The lunar calendar said that there was 360 days counted in a year according to the lunar cycle, the moon, and there, then the solar calendar, which was invented by Julius Caesar in the year 48 BC, uh, says there's 365 days in a year. Well, that's five days too many. According to God's lunar calendar, that's five days too many in a year. So every year for the past 2,000 years, you got to subtract five days off from each one of those years. And that comes out to be 28 years. Too much. Then you subtract 28 years from the year we're in right now, which is 2023 on the solar calendar. Subtract that 28 years from that and you get the year 1995 all over again. So was that a prophetic uh, thing that he was showing us on the solar year of 1995 that on the lunar calendar when it really comes around to the year 1995, which will be this year, that that event that he showed us is really gonna happen this September? Uh, in the month that he was born, which is uh, Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, it's the time of Israel's mourning. They're preparing for the, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, when God said he would come and tabernacle with his people. Well... Uh, if it is, we better be ready. And so, uh, I'm just running through a few things because uh, the whole world seems to be so confused about God's prophetic uh, clock and His prophecies and the things that He spoke of like the sun, the moon, and the stars being darkened. And uh, well, when Joseph was sold into uh, slavery there in Egypt, uh, well, he told his brothers he'd had a dream. And his mom and dad, and uh, his dad said, his father said to him, when he told him the dream, he said, I dream that the sun, the moon, and the stars fell down at my feet and worshiped me. And uh, so his father said to him, are you telling me, son, that me, your mother, and brothers are gonna fall down and worship you? Well, you see, That's where the light come from through the people God had chosen, Israel, priest unto God. They were protectors and keepers of the light, the word of truth, the word of life. And so when he refers to the sun, the moon, and the stars being darkened, those are like the dark ages when uh, Rome, the fourth beast, had turned full power over to the Catholic Church, and uh, they became church and state, and they're the only ones who had the Word of God, then the rest of the world was darkened. It's like Jesus said, the angels are, the seven stars are the angels of the churches, those proclaiming the message of God unto the world. And so, the sun, the moon, and the stars were darkened. And uh, those were the dark ages where they 
had the scriptures and they even killed millions of people because they wouldn't submit to their uh, change of the Sabbath from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week. That's where the mark got started back then. And so that we went through the dark ages and that mark has passed throughout all of history. That's why John said that it passed on all, A-L-L. -L. Not some, not just those in the end of the Ancient of Days, but it passed upon all the people. And so uh, we went through the dark ages where the world didn't have the light of the Word, the knowledge of the Word of God, and kept in darkness, and all these tribulations came upon the earth, and think about all the billions of people who've been killed, and these world wars that's been, that's happened, and, and all the plagues that's happened in the world, and billions of people have died from those plagues. And we've been through these tribulations, man. And uh, here we are at the end of time. And the Lord says that He's coming again after those, after the tribulation of those days. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in the heavens. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see him coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. Well, the time of Israel's mourning is coming up. All the tribes of the earth will be weeping and mourning in this coming month of September. So it could be this this time. Uh, it's in God's hands, but uh, it could be. If it is, then we need to be prepared. We need to be praying like Jesus said that we may be counted worthy to escape the things coming on this earth and to be able to stand before him like a bride would stand before her groom. And so, in a wedding, you know, we want to be one of those that are acceptable, not spotted with the ways of the world, but with the truth and knowledge of our God and Savior. And so, uh, just wanted to point out a few of these things to y'all and uh, give you something to think about. But, uh, I welcome your comments and questions in the comment section and I'll try to answer them to the best of my knowledge if you have any questions just leave them in the comment section and I'll get back with you on it uh, and there will probably be a, a conclusion of this part of let's talk in the next section so uh for now i say shalom keep me in your prayers you'll be in mine i love y'all that's why i bring these messages to you i hope i was well with you i'm gonna say a prayer with everybody before i leave out here Heavenly Father, we come before you this day in the name and authority of your beloved Son. Heavenly Father, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would move upon every person watching this video, Lord God, that you would give them eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to understand, Lord God. That your Holy Spirit would lead and guide them into all truth. You said we need not that any man teach us for the same anointing you have given us teaches us all things and is of a truth and no lie and as he hath taught us we shall abide in that teaching I'm sharing with these 
brothers and sisters, Lord God, what you have taught me, Lord God. And I know there's more, but as for now, I'm just asking that your Holy Spirit will come upon them, Lord God, and be in them, and be with them, and guide them into all truth, just as you said he would, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come. Hallelujah. We thank you for it in the name of Yahshua, Christ Messiah, the Son of the Most High God, Ben El Elyon. Hallelujah. Thank you for loving us, and we love you, Heavenly Father, our God, Abba. We thank you, Yahshua, for being our Savior and our Lord and all you've done for us. Forgive us of our sins and lead us and guide us day by day. We love you. Thank you for loving us. And I know you love us all. Thank you. Tada Rabbah. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. All right, you guys, I love you. And if he gives me some more to share with you, I'll come share another one with you. Let's talk. That's what we'll call this. Let's talk. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. And shalom by ye. Peace be unto your house. Amen. Be amen.